Back between the hedges on a glorious September afternoon, 85 degrees as we approach kickoff. Georgia and South Carolina. The Bulldogs won the toss and deferred, so South Carolina will receive with Bruce Ellington back deep. Steven Garcia in the Gamecock offense will get the ball first. Blair Walsh to kick off. And the atmosphere befitting a very important early season conference game. Good boot by Walsh through the back of the end zone. Down on the field, here's Heather Cox. Sean, thanks so much. As you mentioned, last year Georgia struggled to contain Marcus Lattimore. Well, guys, that challenge could be even greater today considering that linebacker Alec Ogletree is at least for, out for at least a month following surgery on a broken foot. Mark Rick said it is a huge blow to his defense and will use a walk-on and a freshman to split time in that position. But, Sean, the Georgia defense is compensating by promising to have at least two players tracking Lattimore on every play today. Mark Rick said Alec Ogletree was, of all the players on the team, likely the player they could least afford to lose. They were already thin at inside linebacker with him. Garcia hands it off. Marcus Lattimore, after his coming out party last year, was a freshman against Georgia when he ran for 182 yards. Gets three on that carry. Tackled by Kwame Gethers. In the middle of that front three, 3-4 defense for the Georgia Bulldogs. 37 carries last year in South Carolina's 17-6 win in Columbia, about two and a half hours away. Garcia out of the gun now on second and seven. Georgia brings a blitz, and Garcia dumped it off in the flat. Justice Cunningham, the tight end, the catch, and he's very near a first down. Lattimore and Jeffrey, the stars on offense. Lattimore, one of the best running backs in the country. Jeffrey might be the best wide receiver and a veteran offensive line. 80 combined career starts and three senior starters. Third down and one. Lattimore, the ball carrier, and he has the first down. Out to the 32-yard line where D'Angelo Tyson made the stop for the Bulldogs. You talk about the South Carolina offense. They've got a big offensive line, and they're they're assignment oriented. They get on you, and then Marcus Lattimore he picks and chooses. And boy, what great vision and feet this kid has! Three wide receivers. Garcia out of the gun with all day to throw. Near side incomplete. Tenet for A. Sanders. The 3 4 defense coordinated by Todd Grantham with Gethers between Tyson and Avery Jones up front. Jarvis Jones, transfer from USC, was outstanding in the loss to Boise State. Christian Robinson's dad played at South Carolina. Sue looks a walk on. In the secondary, they get Bakari Rambo back, and that's big. He was suspended last week for a violation of team rules. Sanders Cummings, who played safety last week, moves back to corner. Second and ten. Garcia and a depth runner. Throws on the run. Incomplete. Out of bounds again. Intended for D'Angelo Smith. Garcia. His numbers from a year ago. He's the fifth-year senior, but did not start last week. They had an open competition in camp. The coaches felt Connor Shaw performed better. So he started, struggled last week against East Carolina. Garcia came in and led them to a 56-37 win. Yeah, and he treated it like it was his team, and that's what he needed to do. Just for being down there, watching him in practice, he's lighter than he was a year ago, and he's more confident than he was a year ago. Georgia coaches think he's a rhythm passer. They want to keep him out of rhythm. He can struggle if that's the case. He throws deep down the field. He was totally out of sync there. Not a white shirt in the area. Three straight incompletions after they picked up one first down, and South Carolina will punt. Bruce Ellington went to the post. He must have misread it, and he, he took it to the out. But credit the Georgia defense for bringing pressure and setting up this fourth. Joey Scribner Howard in the punt. 
He won the punting job in training camp in an open competition. He's a transfer from Carson Newman, where he was a place kicker. Brandon Smith back for the punt. It's a short punt. Smith signaled that he was going to let it bounce and was going to get away from it. And then he decided to field it and he almost muffed it. He fell on it at the 18 yard line. A 50 yard punt with help from the bounce. Antonio Allen down there in coverage. And here comes Aaron Murray. The Georgia freshman record 3,049 yards last season. Second highest passing total in a season ever by an SEC freshman only Jared Lorenzen of Kentucky back in 2000 threw for more yards in his first year than did Murray for Georgia last year. Richard Samuel opens as the tailback we'll see a lot of the freshman Isaiah Crowell big hole on that much criticized offensive line after their nightmare of a week ago. And a 13-yard rumble for Samuel, and they'll look to go no huddle. Sean, you said it right. It's the offensive line. This time, they came off the ball and got a body on a body and got a good push. A week ago, their first step was straight up and down. They lost leverage completely, and that's all they worked on all week long. And they practiced in pads both Tuesday and Wednesday, and that's highly unusual for Georgia. Samuel in trouble this time. He got banged down behind the line of scrimmage. Excellent penetration by the defense led by the safety. D.J. Swearinger. Samuel will split time with Crowell. Figgins is a converted tight end. Now a fullback. And up front, Cordy Glenn. 38th consecutive start. Ben Jones, the center, 37 straight starts. Dallas Lee's a new starter at left guard for the injured Canarius Gates. Murray dumps it off short for the fullback, Bryce, the Bruce Figgins, who got two. Got back the lost yardage on the first down run. Well, they're looking at third down and ten now for the Gamecocks, an outstanding defensive line. Including the true freshman Davion Clowney, one of the most highly recruited players in the country. Bowens, Wilson, and Allen, the linebackers. Gilmore, one of the best corners in the country, or the coaches thought he had a bad week last week but against East Carolina. Spurrier said it was his worst game as a game cop. Murray, as was the case last week, running for his life, he turned it into a one yard game. But that was shades of last week when he was sacked six times by Boise State, four of them on third down. Oh, you're going to see Devin Taylor, number 98. He just beats Anderson like a drum. He just goes right around the edge. No move, really, just speed. That's a poor set by Anderson. So Drew Butler, perhaps the best punter in the country, in the punt to Ace Sanders. 46.2 career punting average. For Drew Butler, now a senior. Wow. And that's a bomb and a fair catch made by Sanders back at the 15 yard line. 53 yard punt and no return. No score. Just underway. One of the great mascots in all the sports throughout the years, Ugga, the Georgia Bulldog. This is Russ, who is the current interim mascot. He stepped in at the Liberty Bowl when Ugga 8 became ill with lymphoma. Fortunately, Ugga 8 passed away, so Russ is the interim mascot until a full-time replacement is announced. It's good whether you're the interim or the regular mascot here because you get treated very well. I like that air conditioner back there laying around with some ice. In another life, I'm coming back as Ugga. <laughs> Second possession for South Carolina. Each team's had it once. Each team has punted. Steven Garcia deep handoff to Marcus Lattimore running room outside. He turned the corner and made the 27 yard line. For a gain of 12 and a first down for Lattimore, the sophomore. We talked a little bit about his vision. And right there, it's just he sees the whole field. This guy has a rare combination of abilities and skills, rather. 
Lattimore again. This time they're ready for him up the middle. But he did advance it close to the 30 for a pickup of three. He rushed for just under 1,200 yards last year as a freshman. And he didn't play against Vanderbilt and missed parts of two other games, including their loss to Florida State in the Chick fil A Bowl when he was injured early. Nice catch over the middle. Alshon Jeffrey using his six foot four inch frame to haul one in at the 45 yard line. His first catch, good for 15. Alshon Jeffrey might be as good a guy, professional or in college, that I've seen who catches the ball away from his body. He does it extremely well on top of his head, over his head, and he just plucks the ball. Watch, it, just plucks it out of the air. Very good hands, big body, big plays. He caught seven balls last year against Georgia. Great pitch by Garcia. And a Sanders stop near the line of scrimmage. Nice play by Sanders Cummings, the junior from Augusta, Georgia. South Carolina is coming out and taking big splits. And when you play an offense that takes big splits, the gaps between the interior linemen, you really have to play with discipline up front in your front seven because it's all about gap control. Garcia surveying the situation on second and ten. Very high throw. He does not look particularly sharp early. Looking for Jeffrey. Yeah, and Bakari Rambo is sitting right there looking to take out his drift. I want you to show you the split. See the dip, the, the in-between spacing between the offensive linemen. Those are wide splits. And when you play a team that takes wide splits, defensively, you have to hold the point and keep your discipline. A lot of times you have a tendency to want to jump in and make a play and get out of your gap, and that's when Lattimore bounces it outside. Movement along the line, no flags down. Garcia under duress, threw it up for grabs, incomplete. He's now two for seven. Threw in the general direction of Marcus Lattimore in pressure from Cornelius Washington. Sean, I agree with you. It looked like he, he got a running start at least. And he got to that top corner and forced Garcia into an errant throw. Looks like Garcia is a little bit on, out of sync right here, right now. And he's had an up and down ride at South Carolina on the field and off. And in the heart and mind of Steve Spurrier, Brandon Smith, signal for a fair catch. At least he maintains that he did. He wants a flag. And now they drop one. As Antonio Allen bumped him just as he made the catch of a 39 yard punt. That back judge there, he didn't know where the flag was. He went front pocket, back pocket, side pocket, went to the back pocket, and then finally found it. Ben Wagers is the referee leading this SEC officiating crew. Kick catch interference against the kicking team. 15 yards from the front foul. First down. So the head ball coach is not particularly happy with the way things have transpired to this point. No score. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Cadillac. More Bulldogs having fun on this beautiful campus. One of the great college towns in America, Athens, Georgia. The locals hoping for a big win that will perhaps turn the fortunes of their program around. Mark Rick acknowledging that the win total has dropped off in recent years, but he believes they're not that far away from returning to the top of the SEC. Isaiah Crowell, the true freshman at running back. Another one of the most highly recruited players in the country last year. That's what these folks were hoping and expecting to see for the freshman from Columbus, Georgia. 15 yards and a first down. And this is what this coaching staff was expecting to see from this offensive line. 
Give Crowell a little space. He'll get to the artist. Nicely done up front by the blockers. Crowell part of a big time recruiting class dubbed locally as the Dream Team. Finds another hole. Bounces off some hits. He's into the secondary. And down at the game caught 25 yard line. Shaq Wilson ran him down. The program that needs a lift is getting it immediately from Crowell. You see his vision, Sean. His speed in the hole. He sees the whole field that has great feel and comes back right away. The crowd got excited, but not as excited as the coaching staff, which is in the booth right next to us. They were jumping up and down. They got something. 28 yard gain. They marked it at the 26. Crowell out for a breather. Richard Samuel, who was a running back, then a linebacker last year during a redshirt season. He returned to running back this year, and he's in. Behind Bruce Figgins, the fullback. He follows that blocker. Got tripped up and stumbled ahead for three. It'll be second and seven. DJ Swearinger, a hard hitting safety, made the tackle for the Gamecocks. You know, this defensive line for South Carolina has a lot of talent, but really, where it shows up, and you can see Swearinger comes down and plays like a linebacker. But that defensive line really shows up in the pass rush. Right now, they're getting mauled. Samuel to the 19 yard line. They did give up 37 points last week against East Carolina in that 56 37 win when the Gamecocks fell behind 17 0 and rallied. But the defense was put in some tough spots in the first half, in particular when the offense turned it over four times. Crowell's back in. Third down and three. At the 19, more than midway through the first quarter, no score. Murray under duress again, forced to throw it away. Devin Taylor was putting on the pressure. They've been working with Murray to throw it more quickly to anticipate receivers coming open rather than wait until he sees them come open. Yeah, that's what he's got to work on. And that time he had Wooten. It was man coverage, and he was waiting for him to clear back underneath, and he just waited too long, Sean. You're exactly right. So Blair Walsh on to try the field goal. Another senior, one of the best kickers in the country. 37-yard attempt, and it is right down the middle. Good snap by Ty Fricks and hold by Drew Butler. And Georgia with Crowell off the bench providing an instant spark gets three. Crowell had runs of 15 and 28 on that drive to set it up. Back between the hedges in Athens, Georgia. The Bulldogs lead South Carolina three to nothing. They went 50 yards in six plays. They set up a field goal by Blair Walsh of 37 yards. Isaiah Crowell rushed for 43 of those 50 yards in just two carries. Bruce Ellington and Kenny Miles. For the kick. He booted his first one out of the back of the end zone. That's about eight yards deep. And Ellington won't try it. Let's check in with Reese Davis in the studio. Get a Sports Center Right Now update. And Sean, Sports Center Right Now brought to you by Discover Card. A game going on at ESPNU, Stanford and Duke, and Andrew Luck throws an interception. It is deflected, but Lee Butler going to take it more than 80 yards to the house. And the Dukies, who lost to Richmond, Trailing only by three in the Johnny Dawkins Bowl. Tennessee and Cincinnati on ESPN2. Tyler Braid and Derrick Rogers. Derrick was lonely over there. 21-14, Big Orange up on the Bearcats. All right, Reese, thank you. First and 10, South Carolina. Steven Garcia in the shotgun. Take the handoff. Flipped it out for Alshon Jeffrey, and he runs over would-be tacklers. That is near another first down. Nicely done by Garcia when he sees the rotation. See how the corner drops back. 
And when he sees that, he knows he's going right outside to Jeffrey. Now, Jeffrey, a big man, not a fast starter. He gains speed as he goes, but he's good enough to get eight yards right there. Todd Grantham, the defensive coordinator, said had a tough time tackling Jeffrey last year. Garcia on the run, intercepted. Threw it up for grabs, and it was picked off. Bakari Rambo, who did not play last week and felt he really let the team down, suspended and didn't go against Boise State, an immediate impact in his return. Not a great throw and not a great decision. There was no one there. He could have run for the first down. He wanted to get it to Jeffrey, but Rambo undercut it from underneath. And Garcia has been way off so far in this game. Three interceptions last year for Rambo, a junior from Donaldson, Georgia. From the 42, Isaiah Crowell did well to get across the 40. Got nearly three. They had excellent penetration. Looked like Travian Robinson inside. You're right, Sean. He just blew the inside back. And there is that runner's patience. And that's one of those things. I remember talking to John Riggins, how hard that is to develop. Crowell comes by it naturally. Following blockers around the corner. And another long run by Crowell. He's down at the 26-yard line. They'll mark it at the 27. And a gain of 13 more. Cordy Glenn, big number 71, does a nice job of allowing him to get to the corner. Glenn did not have a game that he was happy about last week against Boise State. He's just moved from guard out to tackle this year. Now a senior. Murray out of the gun. High throw over the head of Tavares King. It was a real struggle in their 17 to 6 loss at South Carolina for the Georgia offense last year just 253 yards and 11 first downs. There's an injured South Carolina player and it's one of their best. Melvin Ingram plays both end and tackle and can play linebacker. He is the most natural of their rushers. That's a that's a, a really good football player. Great movement, great feel, can play inside, can stand up. And losing him would hurt this defense a lot because they he's he might be their best defender. Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator for Georgia, told us yesterday he thinks Ingram is their best defensive lineman, one of the best in the SEC. The good news is he's walking off under his own power. Looks like he may have got poked in the eye or something. Where's that number six? Because when he was in high school, played all over the field. He said he scored so fast he was a quick six. <laughs> <laughs> Unusual number for a defensive lineman. Yeah, he makes it look really small. Richard Samuel, the tailback. He gets the call off right guard and got slammed down after a gain of two. Antonio Allen made the tackle. Coming off the best game of his career. He had 16 tackles. A career high against East Carolina last week. Big third down here now for Aaron Murray and the Georgia Bulldogs. Third and nine. They are in field goal range for Walsh. And they pick up the rush. They had all kinds of problems protecting on third down last week. They were just two out of 13 against Boise State on third down and 0 for 2 today. Try to surprise with the run. Crowell tripped up from behind. That saved the first down. Nice tackle by Devontae Holloman. It looked like Crowell had a lot more running to do had he not been taken down from behind by the junior. So here comes the field goal unit again. Go, 
Blair Walsh. Already kicked a 37 yarder. This will be 39. Just inside the left hash mark. So six points for Walsh today, 312 now for his career, just two behind Herschel Walker for fourth place all time in Georgia scoring. Pair field goals by Blair Walsh, the most recent coming after an interception by Bakari Rambo. Set it up. And a good start for Mark Richt under significant criticism in these parts. Papers today filled with speculation about the importance of this game. Many referring to it as the most important game of his career. Georgia opening against ranked opponents in its first two games for the first time ever. Failed to take advantage of the opportunity for a big win against Boise State. This one even more important. It's a conference game. Walsh again drives it deep into the end zone. Three kickoffs, three touchbacks, and a poor start for Steven Garcia. Yeah, he has not been good. In fact, neither quarterback has been good. But Garcia has been throwing high and been erratic. He's made poor decisions, particularly right here on this one. Now, he has been an up-and-down guy. He has shown the ability to be able to regroup, and he's going to have to show that right now. This is 31st career start. Had a streak of 28 straight starts ended last week when Steve Spurrier opened with Connor Shaw for that first quarter. Steve said definitively during the week when we chatted with him, Garcia is the quarterback. We wonder if that will continue to be the case if he continues to play like this. Lattimore stuffed just across the line of scrimmage. And Steve Spurrier is the play caller for South Carolina. Well, we talked about having discipline inside. Well, the guy who's the D'Angelo Tyson, number 94, he holds the point inside. And you cannot play discipline if you don't have a discipline defense, if you don't have a point holder. You need a point to have to build off of, and he's been doing that well today. Second and nine, two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Garcia throws high again and almost intercepted. Brandon Boykin. And it bounce off his body as it was too high for D'Angelo Smith. Again, the ball comes off high. Boykin is in the deep third. And he's gonna he's gonna kick himself for that one. That should be they should be having their arms in the air right now for six quick. Third and nine. Garcia went under center. Lattimore did well to turn it into a game and very nearly got the first down. Came up about a yard and a half short. Christian Robinson and Brandon Smith made the tackle. And you would think it would be a South Carolina punt here, but Steve Spurrier thought about it for a moment before sending Joey Scribner Howard onto the field. He knows right now Garcia's in a funk, and the way to get him out of that is to rely on his offensive line and Marcus Lattimore and run that ball. Now, Georgia knows it as well, and so they're loading the box a little bit and come with some run blitzes, which you just saw. Something's going to have to give. Joey Scribner Howard to punt for the third time. Brandon Smith, another fair catch. And again, good field position for George at their own 37. Monday Night Football returns to ESPN this week with two games between division rivals at 7 Eastern, Tom Brady and the Patriots, and the Miami to take on the Dolphins. And then at 10-15, the Raiders and the Broncos. Monday Night Football, terrific doubleheader to get you started. This Monday on ESPN, coverage starting at 5 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown. Served by Applebee's. We're all excited about the news that ESPN has extended its deal with the NFL to keep Monday Night Football on our network for years to come. 
Aaron Murray under center. Starts with a play action pass. Dropped off to the fullback. Bruce Figgins rumbled down the sideline. And he went out of bounds at the 38 of South Carolina. 29 yard game. Nothing more than an extended handoff. And this is a way to get your quarterback settled down. Just throw him out in the flat. And then a nice job coming back and getting a nice block right there is Aaron White, the other tight end, number 81. They have a good and deep tight end group. That's why Figgins moved to fullback this year. He wasn't going to play much at tight end. Richard Samuel tackled at the line of scrimmage by Kelsey Quarles, a backup defensive lineman, redshirt freshman from Hodges, South Carolina. Melvin Ingram is back out there. In fact, he's in Jadavian Clowney's spot. Haven't heard much out of Clowney. Of course, he's over Cordy Glenn. Samuel again found a hole. Looks like he tripped himself up and he slams his arm into the ground. Tough to tell if anybody for South Carolina got a hand on him. And he went down at the 31. There was more to get on that play if he had stayed on his feet. Richard Samuel the fourth. We saw him a couple years ago when he was a running back. Then they put him back to linebacker. Then they made him a running back again. And I've always thought that the best linebackers were former runners because they're able to anticipate what a runner can do. And he, he does both pretty good. And they need him back at running back. Sean Ely transferred after some difficulties. And Caleb King was academically ineligible. Well, Russ doesn't seem all that excited about the start, and Stephen <laughs> Garcia can't be either. 6 nothing Georgia after one. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football, presented by Cars.com, the SEC on ESPN. Georgia and South Carolina in the conference opener. Georgia. All kinds of difficulty last week on third down against Boise State. Their average on the 13 third downs to get was nine yards. This is a shorter third down to try to convert for their first time today. Interesting formation. Wildcat Isaiah Crowell. And he gets the first down across the 25 yard line. So that's a wrinkle. Out of the Mike Bobo playbook. Well, if you're going to hand it off to him, you may as well just snap it to him. That way you gain an extra blocker on the outside, which he needed to be able to get that first. Seven-yard gain. Well, now back at tailback. Aaron Murray under center, sophomore from Tampa. Hands it off to Crowell. He got rocked and still went forward. For the 21, lost his helmet, but gained three. Travian Robertson made the tackle. Georgia's offensive coordinator is Mike Bobo, former quarterback here, longtime member of the staff. Even very vocal in that group next to us started this game. These coaches know how important this game is, perhaps for their futures. Absolutely. Mike Bobo's a good one, too. Brandon Boykin is on the field. Defensive back who had an 80-yard touchdown run last week. Dance his way this time down to the 16-yard line. He had just one play on offense, that 80-yard run last week. They wanted to get him more involved on offense, but he was bothered by cramps, and the defense was on the field so much. He was worn down. But he has a skill set that none other on this offense has. He has a lot of make you miss and big play in him. And that is always an asset for any offense. 107 yards rushing already for Georgia. Another third down and two. And the South Carolina 16. Murray giving a nice pocket. Throws. Tipped. And almost intercepted. It was intended for Marlon Brown. Well, he had Marlon Brown in the middle, but he had the flat to Boykin wide open. Nice protection. He's able to see the field, and he's eyeballing it the whole way. And when he eyeballs it, defenders do the same thing. That was man coverage, and the underneath coverage was Swearinger almost getting a pick. Shaq Wilson, the linebacker, deflected it. Walsh 
Walsh trying for his third field goal today. No good. Line drive. And Sean, with all the offense that Georgia has put on the South Carolina defense, South Carolina is one big play away from having a lead. The 33-yard field goal that missed. They've been to the South Carolina 19, the 21, and this time the 16-yard line. All they have to show for it is six points. Well, we saw Russ, the Georgia interim mascot. There's Big Spur representing the South Carolina Gamecocks. Big Spur made the trip less than three hours from Columbia. But a miserable start for the Gamecock, particularly for Steven Garcia. But despite the difficulties, down just six to nothing as they take over on their own 20. Sean Carson is the running back. He took the toss. They got ahead for two. And so, Sean, if Garcia is having the kind of day that he's having, then I think there's two things you have to be able to do. One, you have to get the ball to the hands of Marcus Lattimore, whether it's you know handing it off or throwing it to him in the flat like a long handoff. And then the other one is Alshon Jeffrey. You can get him short passes just to try to get some kind of rhythm and confidence in your quarterback. Carson, the ball carrier, limped off to the sideline. That's the reason they stopped play for a moment. And now they'll wind the play clock. More than two to one, the yardage edge for Georgia. With just the six nothing lead. Much better red zone defense this week. Movement right end of the South Carolina offensive line. Ball start. 73 on Austin. 35 yards. Devious Watkins, the senior. It was the SEC Offensive Lineman of the Week for his outstanding performance last week against East Carolina. Yeah, just uh, can't even twitch. And when you're 6'4", 340 and you twitch, everybody sees it. Yeah, it looks like more than a twitch. Shotgun for Garcia. Four wide receivers. Dumps it off. And Lattimore did well to get a couple of yards. He had a collision with Michael Gilliard. Jarvis Jones made the first hit. Well, Jarvis Jones is an impact guy. Now he's he reads that beautifully. Garcia on third and long is a very good runner, and he paid the price. Came up a yard short of the first down. Got spun around by Avery Jones. Help from Bakari Rambo. One thing about Garcia is he has no regard for his body. He will just take off and run, put his head down like he was a fullback. Well, we know Steve Spurrier isn't always the most patient head coach or play caller. And it looks like he might go for this fourth down on his own 29 with 11 minutes plus left in the first half in a 6 nothing game. That smells just like Marcus Lattimore. Rarely does he ever get stopped for a loss. He's always going forward. Play clock was down to two, so Garcia used the timeout. Steve pondered it for a moment. Spurrier, that is. And now he has a little more time to think about this. What would you do? I mean, this is very I think, risky. Yeah, I mean, right now I'd punt it away. I mean, it's, it's only six points. You're, you know, get your guys calmed down. Get back into the game. Let your defense kind of get a rhythm again. But the, the history of this coach. rivalry is very close and yes. very low scoring games starting in 2004 when Georgia beat South Carolina 20 to 16 every game but one in this rivalry since then the winning team had 20 or fewer points the only exception since 04 was two years ago here a wild game won by Georgia 41 37 and South Carolina marched down near the goal line late but could not pull out the come from behind win. One thing I wanted to watch 
was how would Georgia respond offensively, particularly in that offensive line. And through the first quarter, they've done well. It uh, looks like South Carolina is going to go for it even after more time to think about it. Fourth and one. Gamecocks at their own 29. And Garcia's in a shotgun with Lattimore on his right hip. You would expect them to hand it to Lattimore. And a whistle and a timeout called by Georgia. Something about that formation didn't sit well with Todd Grantham and Mark Richt. It was interesting, Sean. They came out in their base formation, and then they shifted the tight ends over, and there was no movement. Running the game, running the ball is all about numbers, so their numbers were probably not right. So as the chess match continues, let's check in back in the studio. Here's Reese. Sean, a Taco Bell studio update from Happy Valley, Alabama, Penn State on ABC. Alabama with a 10-3 lead late in the first half on a third down. A.J. McCarron, who played the entire first half, finds Kevin Norwood. And from there, Trent Richardson would score. Alabama just about to start the second half, up 17-3 on the Nittany Lions. No big surprise there. No. Your alma mater. Still have some quarterback issues to sort out. Yeah, and also an offensive line issue. And that's where I thought this game was really going to be the difference because I'll tell you, you take a look at Alabama's defensive front, that looks like an NFL front. They've got size, they've got speed, they've got linebackers who can really run and hit. And so you watch that defense, and that defense alone can win a lot of games for them. And how about this ball game so far? Clearly, Steven Garcia is not on his game. Haven't been able to get Lattimore free yet, although he's had some nice chunks of yardage. But what do you look for now after both timeouts on this big fourth down play? I still think you have to go with Lattimore. I mean, Lattimore is a guy that, you know, he runs through a lot of tackles. Rarely do you see him tackled for a loss. Usually the pile is moving forward. And if you can just get those big bodies on somebody and get some push, he'll, he'll do the job. Both coaches used the word huge to describe this game. They're the two favorites in the SEC East this year. South Carolina was the preseason pick to win the SEC East with Georgia right behind. Particularly huge for Mark Richt. He said more than anything, it's about the leg up in the SEC race. But Mark knows that the pressure would be eased on him and his staff and players with a win. If they lose today, that pressure intensifies even more. And it is considerable pressure on this Georgia football program. Time out. Three in a row. South Carolina has called two. Georgia one in between. You wonder after all this if Steve Spurrier will punt. You know, I was watching that game last night. At Arizona State. And, and Missouri. I was, I, I still haven't figured out why it looked like he iced his own kicker. Now, I know that wasn't the case. But they called timeouts at the end of that game. And that thing didn't look right. And this one right here, how many looks can you get? Well, if you're Steve Spurry, you have any doubt about your decision to go for this, you have to be wondering if somebody's trying to tell you something here, Steve. <laughs> this is now your fourth chance <laughs> to reconsider. But he's been one of the great coaches of his era in college football, and in large part because he is willing to gamble. That is what I've always admired about the old ball coach. He will go against the norm. He's not afraid. He's not afraid to make that kind of decision and then come out and punt. Yep, now they do send the punting unit on. So it cost him two timeouts. Georgia won. That's They're going to punt. It's a head scratcher. Yes. Clearly he thinks his team needs a spark, and it does. Four than one provided that opportunity, but he decided... Hunting is a good idea. And what a kick it is by Joey Spidner Howard. And a fair catch made by Brandon Smith with really nobody for South Carolina particularly close. 60 yard punt. Longest of his brief South Carolina career for Scribner Howard. Here's the Aflac trivia question today. Which three original members of the Southeastern Conference are no longer a part of the SEC? I don't know about that question, but that Aflac duck just did a, a Desmond Howard. Did you see that? He gave that little Heisman pose. I like that. 
And these days, it's hard to keep track of who's in what conference, the way they keep coming and going. And the news of the week, Texas A&M, been approved to join the SEC by the Southeastern Conference pending the resolution of their entanglements with the Big 12. He's very really asking about that, so it really won't make much difference. We're not going to recruit in Texas anyway. Isaiah Crowell. Out near the 20 yard line. Pretty good gain on first down. You know, Sean, it'll be. Actually, going to mark him out, pardon me, Matt, back at the 15 yard line. Very little gain. It'll be interesting to watch Crowell as he gains confidence because he's just figuring this college game out. And the number one thing that you see with players where they where they really grow is is when they get confidence. South Carolina brings a blitz and it pays off as Murray got leveled by Jadavion Clowney. Back near the five yard line. They come with the blitz. Clowney's just gonna come. Nobody, nobody really. Nobody picks him up. Nicely done on the outside. Considered Monty Holloman, yeah, by many to be the top prospect in the entire country coming out of high school in the spring. Third straight Mr. Football in South Carolina to play for the Gamecocks. Third and 16. Isaiah Crowell, another one of the best high school seniors in the country last season, wrapped up by Devontae Holloman. And the first little smattering of boos from this crowd after a conservative play call from the shadow of the end zone. Now this is an opportunity to get field position, something South Carolina has not had all day long. Drew Butler won the Ray Guy Award as the best punter in the country in 2009. Was a finalist for that award last year. Academic All-American. So the former Bulldog place kicker, Kevin Butler, who was an All-American at Georgia, had a long and distinguished NFL career. Good punt by Drew. A Sanders. Return of about three yards to the 47-yard line. Mike Gilliard made the tackle. 46-yard punt by Butler. Good field position for the Gamecocks. Six-nothing Georgia. ESPN's College Football is presented by Dodge. Visit your local Dodge dealer today. And Bud Light, it's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. There's a look at present-day Hurdy Field. It was the original on-campus venue for football and baseball at the University of Georgia. Opened way back in 1891, hosted the first Georgia football game against Mercer in 1892. For a while it was a parking lot in the 1940s, then converted back to green space. A lot of history over there at Hurdy Field. Brand new video board here at Sanford Stadium. $1.4 million to provide these fans with those pretty pictures. So the decision to punt by Steve Spurrier on that fourth and one paid off. Proved the field position after his defense got a stop. Best field position of the day for the Gamecocks. Lattimore couldn't stay on his feet as he crossed midfield. Went down to the 47 of Georgia. Good for a six-yard pickup. So, Sean, now when Garcia is in a funk like this, that effectively takes Alshon Jeffrey out. And that means Lattimore has got to carry the day, and the defense knows it. Whoa, they weren't ready for the snap. Garcia wasn't. And South Carolina got it back. At the 46, they actually picked up a half yard. We were still signaling when T.J. Johnson snapped the ball. Well, they, are, they are completely out of sync. But they are going to have to be able to run. If they're going to run, they're going to have to be able to run at eight-man fronts. And Lattimore is good enough to be able to do that with. He's the lone back. Three wide receivers on third and three. Lattimore, lots of running room, first down. Bakari Rambo made the tackle. Sean Williams also in on the play. Goes to the 38. First and 10, South Carolina. So what Spurrier said, does instead is spread them out and goes with three wides. That removes a guy from the box, and it helps Lattimore. He gets to the edge with a big first. Nine-yard gain for Marcus.
Midway through the second quarter. Lattimore fights his way inside the 35. Here's Reese Davis. Sean, Virginia Tech is strolling into Dowdy Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina, expecting to waltz out with a victory. East Carolina had a 7-3 lead, but Josh Oglesby for the Hokies goes in tough. Early second half, number 11, Virginia Tech on top by three. Steve Spurrier wasn't pleased with the way his team played against East Carolina last week. He used words like sloppy and sorry. And they managed to rally back. It's the Chorus Pirate defense to win. Second and seven. Garcia had a lot of time. Ran out of it. Throws on the run. Caught. Elshon Jeffrey. And South Carolina is an extra point away from the lead. A 34-yard touchdown. That was just schoolyard football, Sean. Exactly what we just spoke about a few minutes ago. They were one big play away. And Alshon Jeffrey is the guy who can make the big play. When Garcia got outside the pocket and saw the one-on-one, -on -one, he knew exactly where he was going. 16th career touchdown reception for the junior. St. Matthews, South Carolina. Jay Wooten adds the extra point. South Carolina awful on offense until this possession all of a sudden has the lead. Welcome back to ESPN's College Football presented by Cars.com and the SEC on ESPN. 34-yard touchdown pass. Garcia to Jeffrey. The extra point in South Carolina has the lead. Garcia had 31 yards passing before the touchdown. Got 34 on that one throw. Jay Wooten will kick off. Brandon Boykin, one of the best return men in the country, back deep. Four kickoff returns for touchdowns for Boykin, including one two years ago against South Carolina. Very nearly broke it. They got him down at the 36-yard line. Let's take a look at this. They're going to go man-to-man -man outside here. Now, I want you to watch the safety and the quarterback because they are keys in the coverage. He comes up and gets physical first right there. Garcia eyeballing this side. Pulls the safety out of the middle, and that effectively gives you one-on-one. -on -one. Now, the sign of every great receiver is the ability to separate at the crucial point, and Alshon Jeffrey did just that. And off to Malcolm Mitchell, freshman wide receiver, going across the formation, and the game cops are ready for him. He's another headline member of that dream team, Mitchell. 24 games in a row now with at least three catches for Alshon Jeffrey with three today, including the touchdown. Touchdown pass by Garcia, his second of the season. They completed only 10 passes last week against East Carolina. Seven of those completions by Garcia. And movement and shades of last week for Georgia. Lots of movement on offense before snaps. Ball start, 79 on offense, only five yards. That happened twice last week to the right tackle, Justin Anderson. The coaches last week said, well, first game jitters, a lot of noise in the Georgia Dome. You don't have those excuses today. Now you're at home and you can hear everything and including your anticipation which is your secret weapon when you're on the offensive line being able to anticipate that count and they just jumped it. One thing you cannot hear right now is the crowd. They were into it early when Georgia had the edge in play and the lead. But the touchdown by South Carolina has really quieted Sanford Stadium. And if it continues ugly, you wonder if they will turn on the coach. One columnist in the Atlanta paper today 
said Mark Rick's approval rating in these parts is at about 5%. Murray forced to pull it down and run and has room. And a first down. What a run by Aaron Murray to the 45-yard line of South Carolina where he was tackled by Travian Robertson, 23-yard gain. Devin Taylor leaves his helmet all the way at the other end right there. But Murray just takes off and runs. What a great job. They, this is exactly what they need. They need something to spur them on right now because they're in a funk as well. Murray, first team preseason all SEC. It's a conference of loss. Several headliner quarterbacks after last year. And off to Richard Samuel. He's down across the 42. Gain of three. Here's Heather. John, freshman running back Isaiah Crowell remains on the sideline. He, ben Jones, his center, chewed him out after the last series for a missed assignment. Then the medical staff came over, removed his shoulder pads, added a layer of extra padding around his kidney and rib area. They said he's going to give it a go. Whether or not he's not playing because of the missed assignment or the ribs is yet to be seen, Sean. He had some problems in pass protection last week. Not unusual for a young player, Samuel. <laughs> For a first down to the 31, chopped down by D.J. Swearinger. Ten more yards on the run for Georgia, and they're back in field goal range. But Samuel is just enjoying some nice blocking up front. Good job by that offensive line that allows him to get to that second level. Now he's a straight line guy. And Samuel is not a make-you-miss type of guy, so when he starts piling up the yards, you're doing well up front. He's 243 pounds. Bouncing off bodies ahead for two. The 29 yard line. Rodney Polk made the tackle. Sixth year. Granted, an extra year of NFL. With four minutes to go in the half. Georgia trying to reclaim the lead. South Carolina not ready. Snap it. And to me, that's a wasted opportunity yep. right there. Murray looking to the sideline, now maybe changing the play. Very well. To the 26. Devin Taylor, the tackle for South Carolina. Sean, that's one of the things you really, the trend in the last probably five or six years in the NCAA is the, all the coaching, all the play calling, all the adjustments, everything comes from the sideline. And so you'll watch offenses stop and turn to the sideline, and the defenses look at their sidelines. And in that particular instance, we just saw a wasted opportunity to take advantage of an unprepared defensive front. Cornerback Brandon Boykin on the offense again for Georgia. Murray, lots of time. Going deep, has a man. Touchdown. Rantavius Wooten puts Georgia back on top. The four yard drive, 26 yard touchdown pass. The extra point up and good by Blair Walsh. Aaron Murray to Rantavius Wooten, the junior from Belgrade, Florida. Part of an inexperienced receiver group trying to fill the void with the departure of A.J. Green in the NFL. Georgia back on top, 13 and nothing. Aaron Murray, a 26-yard touchdown pass to Rantavius Wooten. Oh, CC Whitlock on the outside right here. Looks like they're going to play zone back underneath. Now, once he gets into the into that secondary, this safety is gone. This turns into a one-on-one -on -one with Whitlock, and his eyes right there. He bites back inside, and it's over. Side kick, they get a great bounce and recover it, but there is a flag down at the 
Georgia line of scrimmage. They might have been offside. Bakari Rambo recovered the onside kick by Walsh, but there's a flag down. And it, if, if it's not against Georgia, it would come back to where he recovered the ball. He can't return it that way. It would almost certainly have to be, you would think, against Georgia based on where that flag was dropped, right where they were lined up across the 30-yard line. Ben Wagers and his crew discussing the situation. Number 18, on the 15, penalty in the 30-yard line. That was Rambo who recovered it. Boy, it is really close, too. Just, I want you to watch the second guy in up top. That's Bakari Rambo. Watch it. It's really. Yeah, he's stepping the kick. That is, wow, that is really close. But they threw the flag. So it's coming back. I think that's one of those on a regular kickoff deep. That official might not have thrown the flag. You kind of saw him take a look at the play for a moment before he did. But given that it was important to the result of the play, it had to be called. He was just ahead of it. Well, you like the call, though, by Mark Rick and his staff. Roll the dice there. Try to, try to take advantage of the little momentum that they got. And it's interesting because if you're a fan of Mark Rick, you'd say it's a great call. If you're not a fan, you're quite cool in these stands there. Oh, it's a desperate move by a desperate coach. <laughs> Bruce Ellington runs the kickoff. Blair Walsh back to the 29-yard line. Let's answer today's Aflac trivia question. Which three original <laughs> members? Duck is much more animated this year. The yes, SEC no longer part of the conference. This one stumped us. I would be surprised if many people around America got this today. Solani, the University of the South, which departed the conference in 1940. Georgia Tech and Tulane. So 2.47 to go in the half. South Carolina trailing again. They were down 6 nothing. took a 7-6 lead. Now 13-7. They have just one timeout left. And the pass dropped by D.L. Moore. Big target at 6-4. Hopefully he took his eye off the ball. He was thinking about turning to run. South Carolina burned two timeouts when Steve Spurrier thought about going for a fourth and one on his own 29. Earlier in this quarter with his team behind 6 to nothing. After his two timeouts and a Georgia timeout in between, they decided to punt. And it paid off. Second and ten, a blitz. Garcia retreats and throws it away. Brandon Boykin came on the blitz. Here's Reese Davis. Bud Light halftime reports coming right up. It's Saturday in football season, Auburn must find a way to win a thriller. We'll also show you how Alabama's rolling so far in Happy Valley and really test it where the Buckeyes in Columbus. It's all coming up with Mark and Lou. Join me on the Bud Light halftime report. All right, just look forward to that. Loudest noise of the day here for the defense for Georgia. Trying to defend a third and ten. Garcia looked to the sideline for some more hand signals from the coaches. Another blitz from Georgia. Garcia hit as he threw, and the knee's down. It's a completion to A. Sanders, but his knee hit the ground at the 32, so no run after the catch. And it's good for just a gain of a couple. Steve Spurrier doesn't like the call right in front of his sideline at the 32-yard line. It's right in front of them. Boy, they're getting pressure, and they're bringing some blitzes. Well, the official's right there. He must have seen it hit the grass. Sheldon Williams came on the, or Sean Williams came on the safety blitz. Forcing the throw by Garcia. A little bit low, and Sanders, who was open, had to take a knee. 
A lot of conversation here. Steve Spurrier and the officials. Todd Grantham, though, the defensive coordinator for Georgia, not afraid to roll the dice, Sean. And he brought Boykin off the corner. He's, he's, uh, he's pushing the envelope. Timeout call by Georgia. Todd Grantham, the defensive coordinator, fired up on that Georgia sideline, longtime NFL assistant. Now in his second year, his defense has done an excellent job. South Carolina, just 125 yards of offense. It's a fake executed to perfection by South Carolina. And it's a touchdown. Melvin Ingram. And there's two numbers. That's the Melvin Ingram, the defensive lineman, which it appears it is. He's 275 pounds. I think it's D'Angelo Smith. They have two numbers six. Yeah, they do. And it appears to be D'Angelo Smith. No, it is Ingram. No, that is Ingram. Yep. They talked about what a good athlete he was in high school, the quick six. Melvin Ingram, defensive lineman. Right. Tremendous athlete. On the fake punt. They talked about how Steve Spurrier likes to gamble. The gamble paid off. Yeah, Georgia they... tried to gamble. The onside kick would have worked. They were offside. South Carolina fake punt, 68 yard touchdown. There's Ingram right there. See him number six. The most impressive part of this. Runs right through, right over a, a potential tackler, and then right there. That is, you can see he had running back skills in his high school days, and he still has them. And there's Brandon Boykin who was back deep for the punt. And this is a defensive end and defensive tackle, Ingram, who's 276 pounds. It didn't make the Georgia mascot too happy. But Sean at 276, you're right. Now that's you know that's a hamburger away from 280, and that guy's running away from people. That's impressive. Wow. What a turnaround. South Carolina leads again. Boykin trying to get the crowd back up. He wanted, it seemed, little part of trying to tackle Melvin Ingram with a full head of steam going down that sideline. <laughs> Jay Wooten to kick off. Short kick. Potentially, Sky kicked it. And the fair catch made by Aaron White. This week, Sunday NFL Countdown expands to three hours, moves to a new time. Join Boomer TJ, Mike Ditka, Chris Carter, Keyshawn Johnson. Welcome back, Bill Parcells. The three hours of insights and analysis. They'll get you ready for the first Sunday of 2011. That's right, three hours and a new time. 10 a.m. Eastern, presented by IBM. Sunday NFL Countdown on ESPN. <laughs> 2 3 left. One timeout for Georgia. After the short kickoff, the line of scrimmage at 33. Screen too high. Looked promising, but Murray forced to throw it too high for Isaiah Crowell. One of the reasons he had to throw it so high was Devin Taylor, number 90, who's six foot seven. And he gets those hands up, and that ball has to come out a little high. Melvin Ingram is still trying to find some oxygen molecules.
Murray again forced to step up. And he's upended at the 35 yard line. Kelsey quarrels in on the tackle. Clock running. One timeout left for each team. Another third down and eight. Georgia continues miserable on third down. Two out of seven today. After two for 13 against Boise State. Guy who's been really quiet has been Orson Charles. And that's a guy who usually has a lot of catches. I'm out of Georgia. Doesn't have a catch today. Murray's had only three completions. He's three for seven for 53 yards and a touchdown. Timeout, Georgia. So George is out of timeouts. Down by a point. 126 left in a very entertaining first half. What you would expect when these two teams get together. It's been a, you know, really. South Carolina has had two big plays. Georgia initially was moving the ball well, especially with Crowell. But like we mentioned earlier, Orson Charles is the guy who's a chain mover for him, and he's he presents some problems for you defensively. They have not been able to get the ball to him. He had a big opening night against Boise State at six catches for 109 yards. We talk very honestly about the pressure these players feel. So we're aware of what's swirling around about Coach Rickley. Love Coach Rickley. Want to continue to play for him. Murray on third and eight. Dropped. Over the middle intended for Richard Samuel. He couldn't hang on. Shaq Wilson running in coverage. And South Carolina will get the ball back with more than a minute to go and one timeout left in the half. Drew Butler mentioned earlier a Sanders back deep Ty Fricks is his long snapper and Kevin Butler his dad was the place kicker here Ty Fricks's dad Mitch was the long snapper fair catch made by Sanders 24 yard line tonight 7 Eastern 4 Pacific on ABC the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series motors in Richmond for the final race before the chase eight spots already have been clinched in the 12 driver chase field but 14 drivers are still mathematically eligible for the final spots so it's sure to be wild tonight NASCAR Sprint Cup Series from Richmond on ABC at 7 Eastern as a result no college football tonight on ABC with a big matchup here on ESPN. Notre Dame and Michigan, 8 o'clock Eastern time when we're done here. That'll be a fun one. I'm anxious to watch Denard Robinson. Highly talented, but even a better person. First game at the big house under the lights. Steven Garcia gave it to Lattimore on a delay. Weaving through the defense. First down, he battled for every inch to the 40-yard line. Clock stops to move the chain. 16 yard gain. Tackle by Sanders Cummings. And carry 63 yards for Lattimore. They fake the same play. Garcia had his pass batted down by Cornelius Washington. Defensively, Georgia's played them pretty well. I mean, they've gotten pressure. They've, you know, they've hung in there. They've given up a couple of big plays. That that's been it. It was the special teams that allowed the second touchdown. On the fake punt. 52 seconds in the half. Second and ten. Carolina at its own 40. Garcia kept it. Oh no, that was a design play. But he lost two yards back to the 38. Banged down by Christian Robinson, junior from Norcross, Georgia, whose dad, Ken, was a fine player at South Carolina back in the early 80s. His dad was his high school football coach here in the Atlanta area. Christian said his dad was a little disappointed when he decided not to be a Gamecock, but they made Christian Robinson a captain for this week. When he called his dad Monday to tell him he was a game captain this week, his dad cried on the phone. Very emotional moment for their family. 
Third and 13, and they convert. Alshon Jeffrey, as you might expect, to the 43-yard line. Seven seconds left. He's going to try to clock it right here. Try to get another playoff and use that timeout. It means you'd have to get it off in five seconds. That took just one second, so they still have the timeout. So if he's good for 45 to 50, he's still going to have to pick up about another 10 yards. And it's going to have to be, well, he can use the whole field because he has a timeout, but his ball's going to have to come out fast. So defensively, you want to get up and kind of disrupt these receivers. Jay Wooten is the new field goal kicker this year. He hasn't attempted a field goal yet this season for South Carolina. Looks like they're going to try to just push it down the field for one play. Too long. Yep, this is goal. going to be the last play of the half, barring a penalty. Garcia lofts it up near the goal line, tipped around and intercepted by Brandon Boykin. So a helter-skelter first half on both sides. Kind of a fitting ending. Yeah, we we thought we were going to get some rock'em sock'em, and we got two offenses that were out of sync. We got a couple of big plays, but we also have a good second half coming up. Excellent tease by Matt Millen. Here is Heather Cox. Sean, thanks so much, Mark. From a nullified onside kick to a fake punt for a touchdown. Big How did the last two minutes really shift the momentum in this game? Halftime scores. We're down by one. We're playing pretty darn. Action. How would you assess their ability to protect Aaron Murray better in this in this half? Oh, it's gotten better as the game goes is going on. Early on, not very good. As of late, it's been better. Mark, thank you. Right, Heather Cox always well prepared. One microphone doesn't work. Grab another. <laughs> So the difference in the game, the fake punt. And the long run by Melvin Ingram. <laughs> Defensive lineman. Former running back. Back to his roots. 68 yards. A one-point lead for Carolina. Now the Bud Light halftime report. Here's Reese. Back to ESPN's college football presented by Cars.com and the SEC on ESPN. At the half, South Carolina leading Georgia by one. Many members of the military in attendance here today being saluted by this sellout crowd at Sanford Stadium. And with tomorrow, the 10 year anniversary of 9 11, in tribute to our nation's military. Both bands, South Carolina and Georgia, joined together in tribute to our military at the half. I hey mean, I know those images mean a lot to all of us, but as someone who has a son serving in active duty overseas right now, I'm sure particularly emotional for you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it gets you. Yeah. Well, God bless you. your son. We hope he comes back uh, soon and safely. And God bless all the men and women of our armed services. This game, very interesting, kind of hard to describe what happened in the first half. <laughs> because it was a bunch of everything in terms of offense, not a whole lot of sustain anything. Well, a couple of guys who didn't, who didn't uh, disappoint, though, was Isaiah Crowell. He came out running the ball very well. And, and Melvin Ingram. Melvin Ingram had a heck of a first half. Jay Wooten kicks off for South Carolina to begin the half. And Boykin, a couple of nifty spins. We got an additional eight yards or so. Out near the 38-yard line. Here's game track brought to you by Bud Light. The 6-0 Georgia. 
on a couple of field goals. South Carolina had done nothing offensively before that touchdown pass. Garcia to Jeffrey. And Aaron Murray hasn't done much throwing the ball with the exception of his touchdown pass. The Rantavius Root, the biggest play of the half, the fake punt run in. Yes, that's a defensive lineman with 276. <laughs> they couldn't believe it here at Sanford Stadium. Melvin Ingram went 68 yards with a fake punt. First snap bobbled by Murray. He lost two. It was almost as if, and I wouldn't put this past Steve Spurrier, he was saying, okay, you want to try an onside kick on us? Take this fake punt. Well, it was timely and it was perfectly executed. And, and Ingram, Ingram showed the kind of athlete that he really is. I mean, he's he's a legitimate player. So we said he's the best player in this defense. They say he can throw a football 200, uh, rather 70 yards, and he is a very good punter, left-footed, even though he throws right-footed. Tavares King, the ball carry, got to the 39. Here's Heather Cox. Sean, no surprise, Steve Spurrier very frustrated by the lack of offensive output in the first half, but he said we will stick with Steven Garcia. We will live or die with Steven Garcia. He'd like to see more balance in the second half. I also asked him about that fake punt. He said our special teams coach told us if they give us a certain look, it's there. Sure enough, it was there. Guys, quick injury report. Isaiah Crowell bothered by bruised ribs for Georgia and South Carolina Sean Carson out with a knee sprain. So credit to John Butler, the special teams coach, with a good call. Third and nine. Murray throws. Caught. First down. 50-yard line. The true freshman Malcolm Mitchell with his first catch of the day. Good for 11 yards. Well protected. And his mechanics are really good right here. Watch his feet. Step. Delivers a perfect ball right in front of Stephon Gilmore, the all-SEC corner. Just four out of nine for Murray. Aaron back to pass, just a three-man rush. Lofts it up and almost intercepted. Stephon Gilmore had a clang off his hands. He had the best shot at it. Now they're just gonna swing Crowell down that left sideline. And what they're what they're hoping is that Stefan Gilmore will bite on that inside route and that allows the back to get down in that vacated area but Gilmore plays it perfectly. Richard Samuel reverses his field now has some running room picks up a block from Murray the quarterback there's a flag down back at the line of scrimmage Samuel out of the 32 good for 18 if it stands and another first down. I always like to see when a quarterback has the has the wherewithal to know what's happening and get in on a block and be a football player. Murray showed that right there. Murray is a very bright young man. Going to graduate in three and a half years with a degree in psychology and wants to be a coach. Was a broadcast journalism major. That was probably too easy. Illegal block in the back. <laughs> Number 10 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot. Second down. Changed the psychology because Mark Rick told him he thought psychology would help him in coaching. Learn how to deal with different types of people, different personalities. And Aaron told us it's already helped him as a leader of this team. He's a gym rat. He's a guy, he loves football and he loves to play. And he's improving. He's gotten better from a year ago. Throws it short for a short game. And the ball is out. And the officials are saying no. Michael Bennett was down after the catch. Redshirt freshman with his first career catch. Steve Spurrier doesn't like the call. He was out to the numbers to complain. Well, just that little bubble screen comes back underneath, and oh boy, that was a fumble. That looked like the ball was out. Aldrich Fordham knocked it out. Steve's even more unhappy after he saw the replay. Well, the knee might have been down. It may have been. It's awful close. Oh, 
previous players on the front of the review. Rocky Good is the replay official. First time they've stopped the play to let him do his thing. Well, the ball is already Honest, coming out yeah, there. It looks like his knees are on the ground. ground. Knee. And it looks like the ball's knee. That's really, really close. Now there's the ball. He is down the ball. He still had control of the ball. I think they're going to just, there's not enough to overturn what the I call was on the field. Well, from that angle, to me, it looked like the ball might have been coming out. But it was too tough to tell. Steve Spurrier doesn't like it. Waves in disgust. Sigh of relief breathed by Rickton Bennett. That's the right call. There wasn't enough to overturn what was uh, what the ruling was on the field. Aaron Murray from Tampa, Florida, grew up Florida surrounded by Florida Gator fans. Dad Dennis, a civil engineer, a lot of his biggest customers are Gator fans. They couldn't believe his son went to Georgia. When Aaron visited here, he fell in love with Athens and this campus immediately, like the coaches, like the fact it's a pro-style offense. Brandon Boykin got another carry, his second of the day. Got a first down up to the 50-yard line. He did not get a first down, pardon me. Got to the first chain, not the second. Fourth down and nine. Ace Sanders ran one back for a touchdown last week. 68 yards against ECU. The first punt or kick return for a touchdown in the seven years under Steve Spurrier in South Carolina. Good punt by Drew Butler out of bounds at the 13-yard line. 36-yard punt. So South Carolina will be on offense for the first time in the second half after this. Welcome back to Sanford Stadium. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Conference opener for South Carolina and Georgia. From sold-out Sanford Stadium in Athens, Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, Heather Cox. South Carolina begins from its own 13, leading 14 to 13. First possession of the second half for the Gamecocks. Steven Garcia gave it to Marcus Lattimore, got collared after a gain of three. Second and seven upcoming. Jarvis Jones made the tackle, the outside linebacker transfer from the University of Southern California, the other USC. Yeah, and he hurt his back, and then he got healthy, came back here to Georgia. And boy, did that benefit Georgia. I mean, this, is, this is the best player in their defense. He's explosive, he can run, he's got real good instincts, and he's still getting better. He's just kind of falling into his position of what he's going to be. He's, he's going to be a good one. High snap handled by Garcia. Takes off running to the right. First down and more. Garcia had two touchdown runs last week against East Carolina. He runs to the 33 there. First down, here's Heather Cox. Sean, after Brandon Boykin came off the field on offense, he got his right ankle heavily taped, took some ibuprofen. He's favoring it very heavily, was testing it on the sideline. And remember, Mark Rick told us in a perfect world, Boykin would touch the ball about 10 times on offense. The key would be keeping him fresh. Right now, it looks like the key is, can he be effective on offense, defense, or special teams as he continues to test it on the sideline? Flag on the play, and it's Second against down. South Carolina to bring it back and nullify a 22-yard run. Well, they're dropping like flies in the secondary. There's another starter, Sanders Cummings. It's a defense that's played well without Alec Ogletree, inside linebacker. Todd Grantham says Ogletree's going to be 
an NFL player someday. Broke a bone in his foot last week against Boise State. They expect he'll be out four to six weeks. Boykin and Cummings out. That depletes your depth. See if they don't take advantage with Alshon Jeffrey outside. They only brought the ball back to the 12. Garcia hands it off on a draw to Marcus Lattimore. And he has a first down. So after the long run by Garcia got wiped out by the penalty. They get the first down nonetheless. It's just an example of Lattimore on a draw. You draw him in and then it's just use your vision. And that's what he does so well. You know, one of the things that you watch uh, with Lattimore is rarely do you see somebody come right down the middle on him. He has an ability to be able to split the defender and attack a shoulder. He, so he runs through a lot of tackles. 13 yard gain. Lattimore again, gang tackle. And that's what the Georgia coaches on defense, Todd Grant in particular, said you have to do, gang tackle. Well, then there's a reason. He has great feet in the hole, like we said, and bounce, exceptional bounce, runs behind his pads. You'll watch him lower his pad level, and he gives you only the top of those pads to hit, and he always seems to be going forward. Rarely do you ever see him not finishing his run by going forward. National Freshman of the Year last year. 80 yards rushing today. And it seems like a somewhat quiet day for him. He has 80 yards early in the second half. Add three more to that total. Fought his way out near the 28. Now this does two things, Sean. It, it settles down your offense because they were shaky in the first half. It lets your offensive lineman be able to come off the ball, and it lets Lattimore kind of find his groove. Steven Garcia heading toward the sideline. They have Bruce Ellington on the field. He's a Wildcat quarterback, had two runs last week for 18 yards. Starting point guard on the South Carolina basketball team decided in the spring he wanted to play football. He was a terrific quarterback in high school. Was recruited but decided to play basketball instead. He runs and they stuff him. Right at the line of scrimmage. Good defense. Good defense. It allows them to get this thing back. And they just went power to power. Avery Jones. First to take down Ellington. With Brandon Smith back for the punt from Joey Scripper Howard. He's had a good day in his second game as the kicker for South Carolina. Goes up Wobbler. Smith started to the 25. He's across midfield. And ankle tackled at the 42-yard line of South Carolina. Justice Cunningham made the tackle. Might have prevented a touchdown. 47-yard punt, 32 yards on the return. So great field position for Georgia. Trailing by a point. Midway through the third quarter in Athens. Tonight, 7 Eastern time, about 11 minutes from now on ABC, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series is in Richmond for the final race before the chase. Eight spots have been clinched. But there are 14 drivers mathematically eligible for the final spots. Should be a great race. It starts in about 11 minutes, 7 Eastern on ABC. Tight race at the top of those standings, too. Jimmy Johnson, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards. First and 10, Georgia down by a point. After the good punt return, they're at the 43 of South Carolina. Screen, Isaiah Crowell. Down to the 20 yard line. Good call, well executed this time by Georgia for a 23 yard game. And Crowell must have sucked up the pain on the ribs here. 
Because he's, he's in there and he's giving it everything. Nicely done on the front end on Ingram because he has to draw him in and then slip him, which he does very well. Reginald Bowens ran the play down from behind. First and ten Georgia in field goal range to reclaim the lead, but they'd like seven. That's even eight at this juncture. Isaiah Crowell again. Three to the 17 yard line. We're under seven minutes to go, third quarter. You know, you watched him in that opener and you saw that he has some skills, but you're really waiting for him to, to, to really uh, define what he is. And I think today he's done that. Very patient runner for a young player. That's impressive. Here comes the rush, and Murray got it off, and it's incomplete. Antavius Wooten couldn't catch it. Last week, Tavares King had difficulties in the game against Boise State, and the coaches wonder if some of these wide receivers are putting too much pressure on themselves trying to take the place of A.J. Green, or sometimes you just drop the ball. Yeah, just, just relax. I mean, it looked like he waited on that one. He didn't attack the ball. He let it come to him. Back to the screen again. Crowell inside the five. Touchdown. You got to like the call by Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator. It worked earlier, and he came right back to it. And the whole key is to allow them to come in which they do they actually caught him in a in a stunt and Clowney can't catch Crowell extra point up and good by Blair Walsh Georgia back on top by six they needed only three plays they go 43 yards after the excellent punt return by Brandon Smith. Crowell the touchdown. It's a six-point lead for Georgia's first career TD. ESPN's College Football brought to you by Discover Card. It pays to switch. It pays to discover. And Ford, drive one. Sun is starting to set on a beautiful cloudless day here in Athens, Georgia. The curtain is just rising on the career of Isaiah Crowell. Screen pass taken in by the true freshman for his first career touchdown. Georgia back on top in what has become a back and forth affair. Blair Walsh into the end zone. Bruce Ellington's going to try it. And we got just across the 20. Let's go back to the Georgia score. There has to be a couple of elements. First, you have to be able to get them drawn up inside. Now, Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator, calls it to the left side, and it's a perfect call because he catches them in a stunt. So here they come. That's the first thing. The second thing is right over here, Dallas Lee, number 64. That's Shaq Wilson, 54. He has the coverage on Crowell. And Lee takes care of the coverage, and Crowell takes care of the score. Well, he's a first-time starter. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Lee wasn't even sure in the spring if he was going to be able to play. He's having respiratory problems. There's an injured Georgia player down on the field after that kickoff return. So many times when you run a stunt like that up front, what they were doing, that's usually man coverage. And, and the cover guy shows himself quick like Shaq Wilson did. He has to get on his coverage right away. So Dallas Lee does an excellent job of identifying that. And just, you don't even have to, you don't have to muscle him. All you have to do is slow him up. And a guy like Crowell can get an edge and then a lot of possibilities. Austin Dallas coming off the field under his own power. The Dallas Lee thought in the spring he was going to have to quit football. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with his breathing. Finally, they diagnosed the respiratory problem, got him some medication that could allow him to practice and play, but he did not participate in spring practice at all. 
First and ten, South Carolina. Six minutes to go, third quarter, and Garcia blitz them level from behind by Sanders Cummings. Todd Grantham, the defensive coordinator, dialed up some blitzes at the end of the first half, and he is not slowing down. You're going to watch him coming. Usually they come out of the slot. This time it's out of the corner. Whoa. And so it's incumbent upon the quarterback to have an awareness of those corners. Garcia did very well to hang on to that ball. He never saw or felt Cummings coming. Loss of seven. Flag movement before the snap. This crowd fully engaged now. It's the second game of the year, the first conference game, but these fans know how important it is. Garcia just trying to flip it ahead for Lattimore. It's an incomplete forward pass, a very ugly looking incomplete forward pass. And this Gamecock offense out of sync again. Now this is the one thing with Garcia. There will be times when he's, he's just a head scratcher. And not only are you sitting at home or scratching your head, the Marcus Lattimore scratched his head as well. I mean, he was about three feet from him. Up and down career, on and off the field for Garcia. Five times suspended by Steve Spurrier. Only to be brought back. Handling incredible crowd noise here. Play clock at two. Here comes the rush again. He got it off. Caught a Sanders. Out of bounds, short of the first down. Jarvis Jones right in his face. Sanders went out at the 18-yard line, well short of the first down. There's the pressure by Jones. They're starting to get a lot of licks on Garcia. Joey Scribner Howard with Malcolm Mitchell, the true freshman back there now with Smith and Boykin being banged up a little bit. And the punt down just across midfield by Quinn Smith. Tonight, 8 Eastern time, following us here on ESPN, the Michigan Wolverines play under the lights at home for the first time in the big house. Denard Robinson in Michigan hosting Michael Floyd and the Notre Dame Fighting Irish College Football presented by Hampton Hotels tonight, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Let's see how Coach ESPN Kelly three. gets his troops rallied from, from a week ago where they, they played well enough to win the game and they found a way to lose it. So Brian Kelly does a better job getting control of himself and his own emotions. That was an embarrassing display last week on the sideline. Isaiah Crowell. They got across the 45. They'll give him the 46 for a gain of three. Okay. I think any Bulldog fan who's watching Crowell has got to be pleased because he's doing nothing but getting better and better. And every snap he takes is more experience, and he's just going to continue to get better. Rush after Murray, got it off, and a flag thrown. It was intended for Michael Bennett. Stephon Gilmore had the coverage and apparently a bit too tight. And Murray's coming up with a little, little limp there. Mm. Gilmore was all over Bennett on his back, and it was the right call. Murray's tough. Had shoulder surgery in high school, then a senior in high school. He broke his leg. They said, well, you're done Has for the year. Against the defense, number five. Can only be placed at the start of the foul. Automatic first down. 
He said, no, I'll be back to help us win a state championship. He came back in the state semifinals for Plant High School, and they wound up winning the state title. That's yeah, he clearly hooked, a penalty. Yeah, he, he hooked him with that top arm, and then Murray, he gets whacked. But like you said, Sean, he'll, he's a tough sucker. He'll hop right back up, and he does. And he'd already committed to Georgia. The coaches weren't all that happy when he told him he wanted to go back and play. There's a fumble recovered by Gilmore, heading the other way for the Gamecocks. Looking for blockers. Stephon Gilmore down at the five. Run down by Michael Bennett. Never really had his hand on that exchange, John. Nobody had control, and no control was gained until Stephon Gilmore picks it up. And then what a fantastic job of weaving his way through and trying to find his blockers. You called it right. He picked them up and then came back to the other side. Looked like he was slowing down there a bit. I don't know if he was waiting for another blocker out of gas or if he thought he was just going to waltz in and score. But they got him at the five, which could be a big play. Crowell the fumble. 57-yard return. I would have to think this has got to be all Lattimore down here. First turnover for Georgia today. Garcia faked it to Lattimore and got wrapped up by Christian Robinson, the son of a Gamecock. What a terrific young man he is. Three times in high school, he spent his spring break overseas in Africa working to help youngsters most of them stricken with AIDS but he'll never forget those faces and it helps remind him even if football isn't going as well as Georgia hopes how blessed he is second and goal they're offside Garcia takes off on a free play touchdown It should stand. They didn't stop the play, which typically means it's against the defense, and it appeared to be a Georgia offside. Outside, number 29 on the defense, throwing the line. Touchdown. Yeah, so Sean, not only does he jump off sides and give a free play, but now there's no edge set on the defense. Watch, he's going to jump up, and he's off sides. Okay, so now, now look, now he comes up, and now there's no edge whatsoever to defend, and Marcus Lattimore is able to get the block. He gets him in for six. Critical extra point. And a good job by the holders, Seth Strickland, to get down the snap from Walker and Nabinet. And the extra point good by Jay Wooten. Five lead changes in this game. For the third time today, South Carolina leads by one. South Carolina has taken the lead. A day of big plays for the Gamecocks. A 34-yard touchdown pass for their first score. Garcia to Alshon Jeffrey. The long run on the fake punt by Melvin Ingram, 68 yards, and then officially a 56-yard fumble return by Stephon Gilmore to set up the touchdown run by Stephen Garcia. Isaiah Crowell put it on the ground, and the Gamecocks capitalized. Two and a half to go, third quarter. They're up again. So let's see how Isaiah Crowell responds to a little adversity. He's passed every test so far. Jay Wooten will kick it away for South Carolina. Number 12 in the country trying to get to two and off. Good kick toward the sideline to Brandon Boykin. In trouble inside the 20 and swung down. That was terrific coverage all the way by Marty Marquette. Here's Reese Davis with great coverage of Sports Center right now. John Sports Center right now brought to you by Discover Card. Virginia Tech, East Carolina. It was a road game for the Hokies. They were in trouble deep into the fourth. Josh Oglesby powered his way in late. 
That was the winner. Hokey Hokey High wins at 17-10 against East Carolina. Alabama had no trouble with Penn State. Trent Richardson going for 111 yards. Couple of touchdowns, 27-11 the final. Sports Center on 8-11 on ESPN News. All right, Reese, thank you. So Virginia Tech, problems in recent years with early losses. Avoiding that today. East Carolina team that was in a bowl game last year. And Murray on first and ten. Bobbing and weaving. Flag down. He's down. He went down near the 25. Davion Clowney ran him down. Holding. Against Georgia. Well, Aaron Murray knew he'd be seeing to Davion Clowney. Holding. 68 on the offense. Been only 10 yards from the previous spot. First down. Chris Burnett, the right guard. Aaron Murray told us yesterday, I think Clowney someday very soon might be the best defensive player in all of college football. I just hope it's not tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. And you can see it with, with Clowney. Davion Clowney is a player who has great skills, and he just doesn't, he's just being introduced to big time college football. In high school, he just dominated everybody physically. And he's he's working on it. He's got, you can see he's going to be really good. Uses his hands well, has a great motor. Really just needs to get in the way room to get bigger and stronger and then look out. And Runs technique. Four, five, 40. Yep. Long arms. First and 20. Murray steps into a throw intercepted. Another big play by South Carolina. Antonio Allen brings it in. It was man coverage. Allen did a great job of hanging on the outside because there was pressure with a blitz coming inside. Murray tried to sneak it in, but Allen cut it off underneath. Well, last week, South Carolina scored on offense, defense, and special teams, and they've done it again today. 25-yard return by Antonio Allen, the senior from Ocala, Florida, who ran a fumble in 25 yards for a touchdown last week against East Carolina. He's a contender for team-leading score, a linebacker. Well, he played terrific last week, and he's following up again today. They come with the blitz inside. That no, they, they know now that you're matched up man to man. Now he's gonna hold outside position, which is great because all you're doing is you're taking one thing away and you force him to go inside where you can make the play. As a defender, that was played perfectly. It was trying to get to Orson Charles, who we have not really called his name much, but he held the outside, which gives you only one way to go. And then that's the way you play it. Boy, Allen played it really well. Mentioned he had the fumble return for the touchdown last week in the regular season finale against Clemson. Last year, he had an interception return for a touchdown. So that's three straight regular season games in which he has scored. So he played a whale of a game this past week against Boise. He had 16 tackles last week, two forced fumbles, I'm two sorry. fumble recoveries and the touchdown, 16 tackles. Most by a Gamecock since 2002. He's followed up with a touchdown today. Two touchdowns at 47 seconds. Both off Georgia turnovers. The fumble led to the Garcia touchdown run. And the interception run in by Allen. Still a one possession game with Georgia down by eight. Under two minutes to go third quarter. And then Boykin. Four career kickoff returns for touchdowns. That's the SEC record. He doesn't even get the 15-yard line. They're fired up. Marty Marquette, another big play. And there have been a lot of key plays for South Carolina today. They haven't had much sustained offense. They scored in a variety of ways. Well, the biggest one was Melvin Ingram. And that kind of changed everything for South Carolina. He had the big play, and then... Stephon Gilmore with the 56-yard fumble 
return down to the five or inevitably scored. And then this pick. It's been defense today that's done a lot for this Gamecock team. On their own 12-yard line, Aaron Murray out of the shotgun. Short completion to Tavares King. Seven-yard gain. Here's Heather. Sean, you talked about Aaron Murray's toughness. You saw him come up limping two possessions ago. No less than five members of the athletic training staff came over to him. He shucked them, sh shunned them all off and said, I am absolutely fine. After that last interception, he came over, started testing that leg a little bit more, but then immediately looked ahead, went over to his offensive line group, told him to stay focused. Second and three. Malcolm Mitchell, the freshman. With the catch across the 30 and a first down. 12-yard game. CC Whitlock, Jimmy Legree combined on the stop for the Gamecocks. As we approach one minute left in the third quarter, another tight one. And a rivalry filled with close and exciting games in recent years. Three wide receivers for Murray again out of the shotgun. Four-man rush, but they put pressure on. Floater is caught by Marlon Brown. Runs to head, gain of about eight and a half by Brown, who's questionable coming into this game with an ankle injury. You can see he's hobbling a bit as he gets up. Both these teams are not afraid to bring pressure. And, they, and they've been doing it to both quarterbacks. I think Murray's finding a little bit of a rhythm right here. I guess he would be stopped. Three for three on the drive. Second and two, final seconds of the third quarter. SEC opener. In the teams that first and second in the SEC preseason poll in the East. South Carolina one, Georgia two. Samuel the catch and the first down. Just nice, simple reads. Taking the, taking the, either backs out of the backfield, quick screens, that just getting rid of the ball quick, making quick decisions. He's finding his rhythm right now. Eight-yard gain. It'll be the last play of the third quarter. We head to the fourth quarter with the score. South Carolina 28. A good one between the hedges in this border rivalry. Steve Spurrier says within the SEC, Georgia, South Carolina's biggest rival. Of course, overall, Clemson in state, the big rival for the Gamecocks. 28-20, end of three. Here's Reese Davis. Sean, just a few moments ago in the Minnesota-New Mexico State game, new Gopher head coach Jerry Kill was carted off the field after apparently having a seizure on the sideline during the game. Kill is a cancer survivor who was also hospitalized last September with an undisclosed illness and has battled some health issues over the last several years. We do not have an update on his condition at the moment. As for the game... It just resumed Minnesota behind New Mexico State 28 to 21, but of far more significance, the health of Jerry Kill. When we have an update on him, certainly we will let you know as soon as possible. Fourth quarter coming from Athens right after these messages. We welcome you back to Athens, Georgia. Fourth quarter. College football presented by Cars.com. South Carolina leading Georgia 28 to 20. Georgia ball first and 10, their own 47. This drive started at the Georgia 12. Aaron Murray's four for four on the drive for 35 yards. Brandon Boykin in the backfield here. Defensive player seeing some snaps on offense. Malcolm Mitchell looking for blocks from his fellow wideouts. That eight and a half on first down. Akeem Augusti, a backup defensive back, made the tackle. Georgia doesn't need a big play. They need consistency. They've been finding it at the end of the third and in this drive right here. Brandon Boykin is a guy they want to get the ball in his hands. He's in the game. And Mitchell as well is an explosive player. Blitz. Murray saw it. Hits the slant. Marlon Brown battling. Down near the 30. 
Shaq Wilson made the tackle. Murray continues perfect on the drive. Yeah, and because he has good vision and he's able to see the pressure coming and makes the quick decision, knowing if it's coming from that side, you're going to have coverage on the top of it. There's a void underneath. Allow your receiver to get in there, and he makes the big play. Lincoln still on the field for the offense. We haven't seen Isaiah Crowell at running back since his fumble. Good catch on a high throw. Malcolm Mitchell. Down near the 22-yard line. Stephon Gilmore made the tackle. Here comes Crowell into the game. Murray's really bounced back here after this after the turnover. He's finding his rhythm and he's seeing things fast, making good, quick decisions. Seven for seven on the drive. Second a short two. Or a long one. Depending on how you look at it. Crowell drives for the first down. Crowell, Crowell looks at it as a first down. Two hands around the ball there, too, as he turned to the 19. Approaching the first 100-yard game of his career. This is second game. Last year was a highly touted South Carolina freshman, Marcus Lattimore, who announced his arrival in this rivalry game. He had 182 yards for South Carolina against Georgia. Murray on first and ten. Another quick pop. Michael Bennett in the secondary. In the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. That looks like they're going to go for two. I would think you would here in the fourth quarter. Beautifully crafted and executed drive by Aaron Murray. Some confusion on the Georgia sideline. They still haven't run the play clock yet, so they have time. What a drive by Murray. Eight for eight for 85 yards, 19-yard touchdown pass to Michael Bennett. First career touchdown for the redshirt freshman who didn't have a catch in his career prior to today. He's out of Alpharetta, Georgia. Now a critical two-point conversion. Four wide receivers, three to the right of Murray. Richard Samuel, the running back. South Carolina rush four. Murray with time. Has his man for the two-point conversion. Tavares King ties the game at 28. Aaron Murray and the Georgia Bulldogs talked about how desperate they are to win games, to try to help the job security of Mark Ricks. Murray put the team on his shoulders on that drive. In the middle of the sellout crowd, Aaron Murray's family right in the middle of the screen. His brother Josh. He was a walk-on football player here last year at age 26. He's graduated, former minor league baseball player. Good boot by Blair Walsh. Another one into the back of the end zone. Aaron Murray's thrown three touchdown passes today. The most recent one went to Michael Bennett. And what a drive it was. He was perfect, eight for eight. And you know, Sean, it's almost like he focused after the interception. And you like to see in a young player come back from something that goes wrong. And he certainly did that. He was flawless in this drive. He was patient, he was decisive, and he was pinpoint with his accuracy. Eight for eight, and he hit the two-point conversion of Tavares King to tied it. Can South Carolina sustain offense now? to reclaim the lead. They've had just 262 yards of offense. They've scored a touchdown on defense, a touchdown on special teams. They get started at Lattimore. A tough nine-yard run. Here's Reese Davis. All right, Sean, I want to show you one of the many thrilling finishes on the day. Cal in Colorado in overtime. 
Zach Maynard to his half-brother, Keenan Allen. Maynard, the Buffalo transfer, that's the winner in overtime. But remember, this is not a Pac-12 game. It was scheduled before Colorado moved to the conference. Shaping up like a great finish here as well. Tied at 28 in this SEC opener. The two teams with conference title hopes and perhaps more. Lattimore into the secondary. Gets a block from Alshon Jeffrey and finally gets ridden out of bounds in Georgia territory at the 47. 24 yard run by Lattimore. Now watch the vision. That he sees the whole field and he can get out. You know, I once asked Barry Sanders about runner's vision and I said, Barry, how do you see all those things? And he said, you know, I see the same thing you see. I can just get there. And that's exactly what Marcus Lattimore can do. He sees the whole field and he can get there. Six career 100 yard game now. This is just his 15th career game. 115 yards rushing. Both teams have done well on the ground today. Carolina about to go over 200 yards rushing. And will on this carry by Lattimore dragging the tackler. Bakari Rambo with him inside the 40 yard line. About two yards short of the first down. Again, just a good runner's patience. Sees the field. Knows he has a soft edge. Nice job out there by big Kyle Nunn, the left offensive tackle, and he takes advantage of it. I'm surprised that they haven't gone to Lattimore this way a lot earlier. I mean, he's been bits and pieces, but I'd ride that horse. Three carries for 40 yards on the drive for Marcus Lattimore. Runs of 9, 24, and 7. Second and three. We got a yard and a half. They'll need another yard and a half as we run under 11 minutes to go. Jarvis Jones at the bottom of the pile with help from Kwame Gethers. His brother Clifton Gethers played at South Carolina. Knowing Steve Spurrier probably four down territory. I would think he's got a lot of time. Steven Garcia in the gun. They load the formation to his right. Lattimore on his right hip. Steve didn't like it. Timeout. South Carolina. Spurrier timeout right before the snap. Watching the SEC on ESPN, a dandy in the conference opener for South Carolina and Georgia. South Carolina trying to break this 28 all tie with 10 21 to go. Third down, short two on the Georgia 38. Hand off to Lattimore in trouble and drop for a loss. Gang tackled back at the 40 yard line. D'Angelo Tyson, Christian Robinson. And that loss of a couple here makes it a bit tougher decision for Steve Spurry as to whether or not it really is four down territory. They're going for it. Now it's three yards to go. They lost about a yard and a half on that last play. And they need to hurry. Garcia relaying the play, and the play clock's under 10. The umpire needs to get out of the way. Timeout. Time out. South Carolina down to one. You know, a took lot of Steve people. a while to decide, then yeah. took a while to get the play information relayed. A lot of people have opinions about the old ball coach. But the one thing that I love about him is look, great play callers are great instinctual people. They just have it, whether it's offense or defense. Everybody kind of has the same plays. It's when you call them and how you and how you call them. When, and he does as good a job of, as anybody of keeping teams off balance, 
and and just like this, like he's not afraid to try things. I I love that. I think that didn't work for him too well with the Redskins, but it works down here. <laughs> well, it's a different game, college and pro football. Do you like his apparent decision here to go for it on fourth and three? Well, it, under 10 minutes, what he's seeing right here is he's going to have confidence in his defense. And no, the last time they came down, his defense, Aaron Murray, just mauled it. So, look, he's taken he's taking chances his whole life. He's not going to change now. Well, you'd expect Lattimore again. Aaron Murray hoping the defense will get it back for him right here. After the timeout the last time, Sean, you'd think that you have, if you're going to go for it on third, you, you already have that plan that you're going to go for it on fourth. When we saw Mark Rick, you wonder how much of his coaching career his tenure at the University of Georgia will be impacted by these last nine and a half minutes. And let's see what defensive coordinator Todd Grantham does. The last time in this situation, he brought Boykin off the corner. Deafening noise again. Short drop and a quick pass and a great catch. Garcia to Alshon Jeffrey. Wow, it helps when you're going to run that play to have that man on the receiving end. Needed three, they got eight. Great hand. See how he plucks it out of the air. And that is just an inside position he takes. The ball a little high, but you put it in his general. He has tremendous range, Alshon Jeffrey. Already has 11 100-yard receiving games. He's tied with Sidney Rice for the all-time mark at South Carolina. 15 more yards today. He'll have that record all by himself. Lattimore puts his head down. And a heavy collision after a gain of one. Sean Williams, the safety. Junior from Damascus, Georgia. One thing about Lattimore, it doesn't matter whether he carries 30, 35, even 40 times. He never seems to get worn down. Garcia throws. Incomplete. Caught by Ace Sanders. But he was out of bounds. It'll be third down and nine. Todd Grantham coming again with pressure. That's a good call. Foot out of bounds. The official right there can see the whole thing. It'll be about a 48-yard field goal. Jay Wooten still hasn't tried one for South Carolina. A couple of years ago at North Carolina, his long was 43. Garcia in the traffic, intended for Jeffrey, and broke it up. Bakari Rambo's made a big difference in that secondary today. Suspended and did not play last Saturday night in the Georgia Dome in their loss against Boise State. Well, you can see the pressure again. They get a nice chip on him, but Bakari Rambo, he, had, he was dialed in on Alshon Jeffrey. Any inside move he was going to take away, he did. Jay Wooten, first career field goal attempt as a South Carolina Gamecock with all kinds of pressure on it. 49 yarder, hit it well, right down the middle and good. With eight and a half to go. Wooten who had to win the place kicking job in a spirited battle in the preseason. His first attempt as a Gamecock, memorable and good for a three-point lead at Georgia. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard, and in part by Toyota. What a terrific game here in Athens, Georgia, and still eight and a half minutes to go between the hedges. 
One tie at 28. Five lead changes in this one. Jay Wooten, the most popular man in Columbia at the moment, after his 49 yard field goal kicks off. Brandon Boykin from the five. Brandon Boykin all the way to the 37 yard line. Very nearly had his fifth kickoff return for a touchdown in his career. Marty Marquette prevented it. It's easy to see why this Georgia coaching staff is excited about Brandon Boykin. Just great running. Has good defensive skills. And, all, and he puts him right now, he's put him in a position to be able to at least tie this thing up. 58 yard return. Yeah, they're already in field goal range according to Mark Rick. He thinks Walsh has a high percentage chance of making it from 57 yards. So that'd be from the 40 yard line as the line of scrimmage. Crowell gets them closer. Down to the 28 yard line, pulled down by Rodney Paul. Second and short. For Aaron Murray and George as the clock goes under eight minutes. Second and a long one. Murray out of the gun. Crowell up to 103 yards rushing. First career 100 yard game. Murray just did get it off and it's dropped by Malcolm Mitchell the true freshman who would have had a first down and Murray took a shot off a blitz on the edge just off the backside there's the hit and this is the drop it was tipped mm -hmm. Mitchell still had it in his hands and the sign the difference between a, a good and a great play is the catch. Okay, Devin Taylor tipped it a big play for the Gamecock defense now one of those pesky third downs that have been problematic for Georgia in their first two games against these ranked teams and what a catch Michael Bennett emerging as a star here in the second half tremendous catch to move the chains working off the jam Murray puts it the only place it can go down low watch him this is the Fingertips and it was it bounced off a defender as it came off his hand. He still made the catch. That's that's big time. Red shirt freshman did not have a catch prior to today. He has already scored a touchdown. And that catch almost as big. And the 24. Open in the flat. The fullback, Bruce Figgins. He's near another first down at the 15 yard line. Looks like they'll mark him a foot or so short of it. Chopped down by Quinn Smith, the backup linebacker. Murray's over 200 yards passing. You know, if you look at his body of work, Sean, ever since he threw the pick, it's like he's dialed in and he's focused. Isaiah Crowell delivers the stiff arm. Touchdown! Georgia has the lead back. He is what he was supposed to be. And coming off a six and seven season a year ago, you wonder why Georgia was a ranked team in the preseason, picked second in the SEC East, largely because of this dream team recruiting class, headlined by Crowell, who's living up to the headlines today. The important extra point makes it a four point margin. 15 yard touchdown back and forth we go in Athens. Yeah, Georgia has retaken the lead. Brandon Boykin's 58 yard kickoff return set it up. They went 37 yards in five plays. One of the biggest that terrific catch on third down by Michael Bennett. 
We got a warm hug that lasted a long time for this coach, Mark Rick. Very important catch in this game, and perhaps for Mark Rick's future. Bruce Ellington brings the Carolina kickoff return out to the 21. Here's Reese Davis. Sean, I wanted to update you on the condition of Minnesota head coach Jerry Kill, who suffered a seizure during a game against New Mexico State today. Minnesota's team doctors say that all of Kill's vital signs are normal. He has a history of seizures since undergoing cancer treatment. He is expected to be just fine, though he was taken to a hospital. Dehydration could have been a cause. It was a very hot day. Kill, by the way, has had seizures during games a couple of times before in his career and returned the next week without missing a game. He'll probably be more concerned about Minnesota's loss, Sean. That's great news about his health. Thank you very much, Reese. Very highly regarded coach in his first year in Minnesota. Garcia swings it out to Marcus Lattimore. He got popped out of bounds near sideline. Uh, Sanders coming. Got about seven on first down. They'll mark it back a yard, second down and four. Bear in mind, South Carolina's one timeout left. Lattimore is a good pass receiver. In addition to his outstanding running skills, he had 29 catches last year. Out of the eye on the delay. Lattimore taken down by Christian Robinson. That's Todd Grantham dialing up a run blitz. He anticipated that they're going to hand the ball off, so he filled all the gaps. With his front seven, there's nowhere to go. Todd Grantham's called a pretty good game here today. Third down and four. Garcia with three wide receivers. Incomplete pass. Is there a flag? Yes. Intended for Ace Sanders pass interference on Jordan Love in all likelihood. And that, that was a good call. Love had him right from the start. He kind of collared him right off the line of scrimmage. Number 38 on the defense. Penal will be at the spot of the foul. Automatic. First down. A drive extender for South Carolina. Penalty against Love, who started last week because of the suspension of Rambo, a reserve today. They yeah, just grabs the top of his pads, and the official was right on top of him. Each team penalized five times. Garcia under center again. They faked it to Lattimore. Garcia looking deep. Throws caught. A Sanders into Georgia territory. Out of bounds inside the 40 with a first down. He will surprise you with throws like this and how accurate this throw is. On the run, he puts it right where Sanders can get the only place he can get it. That's a heck of a throw. What's kind of like his whole career at South Carolina on and off the field. Steven Garcia can be so bad and so good. Yes, he can. He's, he's, we got the good Garcia right now. 30-yard game. Back to Lattimore through a big hole. Into the secondary. Bidding to give them the lead. Out of bounds inside the two. And if there's one tiny chink in Lattimore's armor, you just saw it. You really would love to see the next gear. But, oh, is he a heck of a player. This guy's a stud. Couldn't, couldn't quite outrun that angle. Sanders Cummings had the angle, took advantage of it. But it's a 36-yard run. One fifty-nine today. Garcia is going to use their last timeout. South Carolina, the third and final timeout of the half. With 4.19 to go.
Monday Night Football returns to ESPN with two games this Monday night, both involving division rivals at 7 Eastern, Tom Brady and the Patriots in Miami to take on the Dolphins. And then at 10-15, Oakland and Denver. A Monday Night Football doubleheader this Monday on ESPN with coverage starting at 5 with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. ESPN announcing a new eight-year rights agreement with the NFL on Thursday, keeping Monday Night Football on ESPN through 2021 and also opening the door for much more Program. NFL programming on the family of networks in the years to come. We're excited about that. Excited about college football always. And this has turned into a dandy, reminiscent of the game here two years ago. The only high-scoring game in this rivalry, the only game since 2004 when the winning team had more than 20 points. And it was a 41-37 win for Mark Richton, Georgia, here two years ago when a last-second rally by South Carolina came up just short. Started slow. But it hasn't disappointed from the half. They have, we've had big plays. We've had consistency. And now we're about to see if they can play some defense or offense, depending on your point of view. Ball marked just inside the three, first and goal. Successive plays of 30 yards on the pass, Garcia to Sanders, and 36 yards on the run by Lattimore. Lattimore slicing. Might have lost a half a yard on the play. Good penetration by John Jenkins, their big number six on the defensive line. Junior college transfer in his first year at Georgia. Highly touted coming in out of Mississippi Gulf Community College. A big, powerful man. If you think Melvin Ingram's six looks small, Jenkins looks tiny. He's 351 pounds out of Meriden, Connecticut. I still think right here you have to go to Lattimore, but I wouldn't be surprised if they just dumped it to him. They're setting up a bunch to Garcia's left. Now they shift over to the right. Toss to Lattimore. Following those blockers, touchdown South Carolina. And the lead again for the Gamecocks with three and a half to go. This is, I want you to watch how Marcus Lattimore finishes the run. Once he gets his shoulders squared to the line of scrimmage, he just, he is downhill in a hurry. Watch this. Stick that foot in right there. Now watch him just finish. Run behind his pads, just carry the pile. Watch him blow. That is really well done. First touchdown of the day for Lattimore. The extra point is good. And that's baked by Jay Wooten. It makes it a three-point game. Now Georgia could only tie South Carolina with a field goal. 328 left and three timeouts for Mark Richt and Georgia. Back in a second, here's Reese. Sean, every week we honor the AT&T All-America Player of the Week. Got a couple of candidates going in our game. Crowell and Lattimore. Trent Richardson of Alabama had an outstanding day against Penn State. Over 100 yards rushing, couple of touchdowns in the Crimson Tide's 27-11 victory. You can get in on it. Text VOTE to 55862 on your wireless phone. You'll cast your vote for the All-America Player of the Week presented by AT&T. And also enter for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game. Don't forget, just after the top of the hour, the first night game in the big house, and look at the throwback uniforms for Michigan and Denard Robinson. The game will start, listen up here, on ESPN News, and then move to ESPN after Georgia and South Carolina. Big off there, slated for around 8-12. It's possible we could be finished here by then. 3.28 to go. Aaron Murray's had a tremendous second half. Will be called upon again to march his team down the field and deliver what Mark Rick hopes will be a huge win for his team and for his own coaching future. And let's not underestimate the role that Brandon Boykin has played here in this game. He has consistently given them big returns, and that's what they're counting on right now. Last one was 58 yards to. Set up a touchdown. You saw Blair Walsh, their kicker. Strong leg. 57-yard range, according to Coach Rick, his career long 53. 
Warriors kickoff down to Poikin at the goal line. And he got rocked out of bounds. Far sideline by Sherrod Golightly, who did not go lightly on Boykin. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> so here's Aaron Murray. Plenty of time, plenty of timeouts, and plenty of players to make plays. And the one who's really stepped up is Crowell. Since Murray threw the touchdown, the interception, rather, that was returned by Antonio Allen for a touchdown. He is 10 for his last 11 passing. 321 to go, all three timeouts. South Carolina doesn't have any. Three wide receivers, and Murray couldn't even complete his drop. Then he fumbles the football. Jadavian Cloudy knocked it loose, and Melvin Ingram has scored again. Touchdown, South Carolina. And a two-score lead for the Gamecocks with 3.12 to go. You know, as a pass rusher, Sean, you're never going to be an effective outside rusher until you take the inside. Once you establish you can take the inside, that outside opens up. Well, Jadavion Clowney, he just took the inside and forced the sack and made a huge play. Second touchdown by the defense. They set up another with that long fumble return by Stefan Gilmore. The special teams have scored a touchdown. The extra point good by Wooten. And it's the largest lead of the day now for either team. Watch Clowney up top. He's going to take that hard inside move. They're going to bring they're bringing a blitz and Melvin Ingram was on the outside. He was the second part of that of that rush. Well Clowney knocks the ball out and Ingram just cleans it up. You know it's always amazing to me that great players make big plays in clutch situations. And Clowney, who's had a kind of a quiet day, but a great motor, and Ingram, who's had two touchdowns today, they found a way to make the play. Two touchdowns in 28 seconds for South Carolina. Five-yard return by Ingram after the highly touted freshman, Jadavion Clowney, made the biggest play of his two-game career at South Carolina. Mentioned Murray was in awe of him watching the film. He said he's going to be a great player. Hope it's not tomorrow. Well, he just made a great play that could be very costly to Mark Richt and Georgia. Looked like they may have been setting up a screen to Crowell. Another one of the heroes of the day, Wooten. Kicks off. High and short. Down to Boykin again. He's dragged out of bounds along the far sideline. Corey Addison made the tackle for South Carolina. Good field position. And now they need two scores with three timeouts and 3.07 left for Georgia. Damian Clowney has the speed to be able to beat you to the top. And he uses his hands pretty well. But once you start coming inside and are thread inside, that corner gets a lot shorter. We'll learn that. Murray steps up, runs, stayed in bounds. They'll stop the clock for a moment to move the chains to the hit from Antonio Allen. They got into South Carolina territory. They'll mark him down at the 45. First down, 17-yard run for Murray. Antonio Allen's turned in a second consecutive big game. Made big plays. He'd had a lot of tackles here today. Good in the coverage side. Two consecutive big games. And a touchdown on an interception return. Murray given time this time. Dumps it short. Crowell dropped it as he crossed the middle. 
Two thirty nine to go. And many of the fans are starting to head dejectedly for the exits here. Was right, then through complete to Malcolm Mitchell, another first down. Inside the 35, marked at the 33, tackled by Stefan Gilmore. 12 yard gain, clock runs under two and a half as they wind it after the chains were set. Murray going deep, one on one coverage, it is. And maybe those folks who are in a big hurry to get out of here might turn back around and take their seats. It's a one score game and George has all three timeouts left. Question was, was Tavares King in bounds? And the answer yes. is yes by an inch or two with the official right on top of it. Might have gone away with a little shove into the back of CC Whitlock. Whitlock had decent coverage. But boy, you really like the decision of Murray. He knew he had a one on one out there, and he knew what King could do, so he put it up high. Ruled a touchdown. They are reviewing it. And based on everything we saw, you would think it would be a quick review and confirm the call on the field. His yeah, left he, foot was down inbounds. You only need the one foot, and there was clearly space between yeah. the end of his toes there and the sideline. And he has possession of the ball. Yeah, it's there. You can see the grass in between. So and the to go quickly. The review is catch, touchdown. Confirmed. Fourth. Touchdown pass for Murray. That's a single game best for him. They took just 57 seconds to go 62 yards in four plays. 33 yard touchdown pass to Tavares King. And now a huge extra point by Blair Walsh to make it a one score game. And it is already a one score game, and now it makes it a field goal game that could tie it. Some of those people who are leaving are coming back in. Here's Reese Davis. <laughs> All right, Sean, right now on ESPN News and ESPN3, Notre Dame and Michigan getting set to start. The Wolverines running out for the first night game in the big house. And check out the throwback unis, the big block M on the front, the numbers up on the shoulder. Big house is rocking, normally known as sort of a wine and cheese sedate crowd. They're excited as the Irish come in. We'll start it on ESPN News and bring it to ESPN as soon as you guys are finished with your thriller there between the hedges. There's Brady Hoke, Notre Dame and Michigan coming up tonight on ESPN. We're starting it on ESPN News. Sorry, Reese, thank you. We'll look forward to watching that when we're finished here. And now a big decision for Mark Rick. Most would. people believe he, of all the coaches in America, he's on the hottest hot seat right now. And he has a decision to make. The onside kick, you have all three of your timeouts. There's more than two minutes to go. You could kick it away, play defense, use your three timeouts. Well, I think you're going to have to play defense regardless. So you're still going to have to get him three and out no matter where you're at on the field. And with the onside kick, you give yourself a chance to have an opportunity to get the ball. So I would take a shot here and try to get that onside kick. But if you onside kick and don't get it. You still, you're going to get three and out anyway. But if you, you still have if to you stop kick them. it deep and stop them in three plays and make them punt, you're right. a very good field goal kicker. You make it a much shorter field to get into field goal position for Blair Walsh. I think you could make, make a case either, either way. way. Yep. As hopefully we just have. Wild fourth quarter. Georgia scored 22 points in this quarter. South Carolina 17. And a wild game. Offense, defense, special teams. 
They have their backup kicker, Brandon Bogate, on the field. And the way he is lining it up, it looks like they are going to play for the onside kick. A. Sanders, the only man back deep, and he's at the 25 yard line. Ten men up for the game, Cox. High in the air it goes. And controlled by Melvin Ingram. That kid is a stud. That guy is a great athlete, Sean. Tremendous athlete. What a game he's had. He's been the special team star. I, I would think that he might be the only defensive lineman in the country who's on the hands team for onside kick. And you saw why. Pretty good vertical there, too. He has scored a touchdown on a fake punt. They ran 68 yards. He scored the touchdown after Jadavian Clowney caused the fumble of Aaron Murray moments ago. So now a must stop for the Georgia defense. First and 10, South Carolina at the 40. We expect a heavy dose of Marcus Lattimore here. Up the middle, good run on first down. He got six to the 34-yard line. Georgia uses its first timeout with 2.07 to go. This week's Sunday NFL countdown expands to three hours and moves to a new time. Tune in tomorrow. Join Boomer, TJ, Mike Ditka, Chris Carter, Keyshawn Johnson, and Bill Parcells. Three full hours of insights and analysis getting you ready for the much-anticipated first Sunday of this 2011 NFL season. Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM at its new time, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. You're looking at a couple of NFL players right there in Clowney and Ingram. You know, speaking of Sundays, there's a couple guys right there. There's three of them in your picture that are going to be playing on Sundays. Devin Taylor, 98. Looks like that's 98. Maybe that's a 90. But Ingram to Damian Clowney, if he continues to mature and and uh, grow his game, he certainly has the skill set. Second and three, one more first down, and that's just about it for this one. Lattimore, 168 yards after his 182 against the Dogs last year. They hit him immediately with that great body lean forward that Steve Spurrier loves. He managed to get about a half yard. Cornelius Washington made the tackle. George is not going to use the timeout here. Well, they're going to let South Carolina run off the entire play clock and take it down to about a minute 20 left before they have to snap it again. Much better able to stop the clock when you're on offense. We've seen that Wooten has field goal range here if they get stopped, but you wonder if they try it. Lattimore outside. First down, South Carolina. Game. Boy, he's an impressive player, isn't he? Marcus Lattimore beats you inside. He can beat you catching the ball. He beats you in cutbacks, and he beats you to the outside. Georgia has used its second timeout, but they have only one left. And South Carolina is a minute 16 away from going to 2-0 and and more importantly 1-0 in the SEC with a big leg up on Georgia. Team that was picked second in the preseason SEC poll in the East right behind South Carolina. The Gamecocks favored in that preseason poll for the first time ever. Both teams made a lot of mistakes. Both teams battled back. But Georgia made the latest mistake with that fumble. And that's the one that's going to seal the victory for South Carolina. Well, after last week's game, Mark Rick talked about the terrific effort and the great attitude of his team. And they certainly fought that league in today, but it's not good enough. And when the fans are frustrated, that's just going to sound like the excuse making. You know, I got to be honest. Not going to be enough. Yeah, I got to be honest with you, Sean. They, Georgia got better from last week to this week. 
we were really, you and I, when we sat and watched the tape, you could see that their offensive line did not play well at all. And today, they played pretty darn well. Isaiah Crowell, he's going to be the real deal. He's got a chance. And defensively, they've got some players. They just, they made some mistakes they couldn't overcome. And South Carolina did overcome the mistakes that they made. Let's check in with Reese Davis. All right, Sean, just about set for Brady Oak and the Wolverines to kick off against Notre Dame. We're going to start it on ESPN News. You guys are just about wrapped up there in Athens. As soon as we're done, we'll bring the Fighting Irish and Michigan over to ESPN. Throwback night. Both teams wearing the throwback uniforms. And we are underway. Michigan receiving the opening kickoff. We'll get you out to Ann Arbor just as soon as we can. Wolverines with Denard Robinson. We'll start just across the 20. All right, Reese, thank you. So South Carolina on the verge of back-to-back -back wins over their border rival Georgia for the first time since 2000 and 2001. For just the sixth time in the history of the series, which dates back to 1894. It is clearly a program on the rise in Columbia, South Carolina. While the Georgia slide continues, they will now be, barring a miracle, 14 and 14 in their last 28 games with losses in nine of their last 10 against ranked opponents. Seven and 10 in their last 17 SEC games. Numbers a lot of these Georgia fans are familiar with. And the speculation about Mark Rick's future was intense all week long. It'll be even more so in the week to come. We acknowledge this game was huge for him. He does have some supporters. And we're neutral. We don't care who wins. But you cheer for a man like him. He's a good person, good family man, tremendous record in his first seven or eight years as the head coach. Players love him, but he acknowledges, rightly so, it's about wins and losses. And right now, they're not winning enough. It's a long season, though, Sean. And this team played pretty darn well, just couldn't overcome all the mistakes. First 0-2 since 1996. That was their most recent losing season prior to last year's 6-7. and seven. Steve Spurrier celebrates another win over Georgia. In a game with seven lead changes and one tie. The final score, South Carolina 45, Georgia 42. For Matt Millen, Heather Cox, and our crew, Sean McDonough saying so long from Athens. Let's send you now to Ann Arbor, Notre Dame and Michigan, Brent Musburger, Kirk Herbstreet, and Aaron Andrews.